Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this week's English Khutbah, and the topic is the character of the Prophets, alayhim as salatu was salam. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of them. Alhamdulillah, all praises are due to Allah, who has sent forth the Prophets with the religion of moral uprightness and has given each of them blessed characters that embody that morality. O oh Allah, our Lord, for you is all praise. We believe in you and your angels, your books, your messengers, the last day and in destiny, both its good and apparent bad. I testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah, the uniquely one, who has no partners in his oneness. We are content with Allah as our Lord, Islam as our religion, and I testify that our Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the slave of Allah and his messenger, and we shall forever be content with that. O oh Allah, send your peace and blessings upon him and upon his family, his companions, and whomsoever follows him in guidance until the last day. Amma Bad to continue. I advise you, O slaves of Allah and myself, with the taqwa of Allah. For verily Allah says, فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَإِن تُؤْمِنُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَلَكُمْ أَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ And if you believe and fear him, then for you is a great reward. أَيُّهَا mu'minun, O believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the prophets and messengers and selected them out of all of creation, for them to be exemplars unto mankind. About this choice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in the Qur'an by saying, إِنَّ Allah اسْتَفَى آدَمْ وَنُوحًا وَآلَ إِبْرَاهِيمْ وَآلَ عِمْرَانْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ ذُرِّيَةً بَعْضُهَا مِنْ بَعْضٍ Indeed, Allah chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham, and the family of Imran, over all of the worlds. Descendants, some of them, are from others. So all of these prophets, who were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were only chosen because they were embodiments of the best of characters, and they were people who possessed the most praiseworthy of attributes. They were designed and intended to be exemplars unto mankind. And therefore it behooves us to reflect upon the examples of the Prophets as they have been mentioned in the Qur'an. So let us reflect upon the example of Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, who was gentle and soft in his dealings and interactions with people. And this was manifested in the wisdom that he demonstrated in the way by which he called his father. And some scholars say that this was his uncle and the people of his Father to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him by saying, Inna Ibrahim la halimun awahum munib. Indeed, Ibrahim was forbearing, grieving, and frequently returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another of the characteristics that have been praised and associated with the prophets. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of them, is the characteristic of sidq or sincerity or truthfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Prophet Sayyidina Ishmael alayhi salatu was salam when he said, Innahu kana sadiq al wa'ad. Indeed, he was true to his promise. Likewise, the character of the prophets and the messengers has often been praised for being characterized with sabr, with patience. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often praised them or has praised them in the Quran by saying, All of the prophets were of the patient. Indeed, the prophets were the most patient of people. And this sabr translated to sabr in ta'a, in their devotion, ensuring that they delivered the risala, the message that they were entrusted with, despite the numerous hardships and trials that many of them faced. Another manifestation of such a, a beautiful attribute and sincerity was the fact that most of them, or all of them, were those of shukr, gratitude. 
In other words, they were grateful for whatsoever they had been given from blessings, and effectively they were grateful for being given existence itself. And for this reason, they were of those who would profess the grace and favors that were given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, saying, Innahu kana abdan shakura. Indeed, he was a grateful slave, grateful servant. Other characteristics that we often find associated with the prophets was that they were dutiful, kind, respectful, and honoring of their parents. All of these meanings are encompassed by the word bir, a type of filial piety towards our parents. And they in turn would this in turn would mean that the prophets would demonstrate beautiful and excellent conduct, ahsan, towards them. An example was the Quran's description of Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salatu salam when it said, وَكَانَ تَقِيَّا وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَيْهِ And he was of those who had taqwa of Allah. And he was of those who had bir, this dutiful uh, honor or honoring of his parents. Likewise, in describing Isa, alayhi salatu wasalam, the Quran notes him as being someone who embodied such bir to his mother when it said, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And Allah made me dutiful of bir to my mother, and he has not made me a wretched tyrant. Because of the exalted character of the prophets, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. They have been described with numerous descriptions and attributes by Allah in the Qur'an. And if we were to summate all of these characteristics, then we'd find that collectively they embody the best of characters that we should embody. And it was for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself to take his embodiment, his guidance from the guidance that their characters represented by emulating them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ فَبِهُدَىٰ مُقْتَدِهِ They are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided. So from their guidance, take an example. And brothers and sisters, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asked to take the example of the prophets collectively, then we can understand from this that he in his character represents the collective excellence that all of the prophets had. And so when we are asked to follow the Prophet ﷺ and to take from his character, we are in effect taking from the best of characters of all of the prophets. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when we reflect on his life, we will find he was the most generous of people in generosity. He was the most kind of them in kindness. He was the most honest of them in honesty. He was the most fulfilling and loyal of people in keeping his promises. He was the most compassionate of people in word and deed. And he was the most honorable in character. In essence, it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described his character as being the most immense and exalted of all. And for this reason, he says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلَقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed, you are of a great and immense character. And indeed, the prophets, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon them all, are all on immense character. And they're all like one family. And their messages are ultimately all interconnected and one. And so when we look at one of their characters, we find that they reinforce and complete each other. Each of their messages does that. And for this reason, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-anbiya'u ikhwa min allat. He said, the Prophets are all brothers in faith. Ummuhatuhum shatta wa deenuhum wahid. Even if their mothers appear different, their religion is one. In other words, the faith and essential message of the prophets is and always remains one. And this oneness remains even if we look at the specific differences in the manifestations of the paths that each of them adopted in the forms of the, the sharia that each of them brought. So whether they had different rites and rituals or sacred laws, this doesn't change from the essential message of tawheed or the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each of their messages called to. And so effectively, all of the prophets were interacting with the people around them on the basis of 
calling them to this oneness. And in many ways, they would, this would also entail recognizing a connection or brotherhood amongst all of humanity, that we are ultimately all from one to one in terms of having one parent, but also in terms of our souls and what that is requiring of us with regards to submitting to the one, a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we find that the prophets, when they would interact with their communities, even if the communities were rejecting them, the first point of call was to speak to people from a point of brotherhood, a point of brotherhood amongst humanity. And this demonstrates a form of gentleness, compassion, and leniency to, to mankind. And so what the prophets were demonstrating here is an expansiveness and inclusiveness of heart that we are tasked to embody too from our embodiment and emulation of the prophets, whereby we genuinely inter interact with our fellow human beings from a position of this universal sense of brotherhood and seeking good for our fellow human beings. And hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we note these various ayat or narration or verses whereby they are um, called and summoned, then often the term is the term brother. So for example, the reference to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ نُوحٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ When their brother Nuh said to them, Will you not have taqwa of Allah? Elsewhere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا And to Aad, we sent their brother Hud. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا And to Thamud, we sent their brother Salih. Or elsewhere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا And to the people of Madian, we sent their brother Shu'ayb. So even in these references, we can find that the prophets, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of them, were not just connected in their own brotherhood, but they were also calling us to a collective brotherhood amongst humanity, a more universal brotherhood and sisterhood that entails that we be there to help one another, to mutually aid one another, that we be patient with one another, that we be grateful for the gifts we've been given. And more so, it also means that from our emulating the prophets, we also have to demonstrate wisdom, truthfulness, sincerity in our interactions with one another for the sake of Allah, so we can be people who guide people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, all of this is from the most excellent and beautiful characters and attributes that each of us has been tasked to emulate so that we can realize our potential, our potential to actualize the gift of humanity that each of us has been given. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we'll end this khutbah with this verse, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِيهِمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ there has certainly been for you in them, i.e. the prophets, an excellent pattern or an excellent way of conduct for anyone whose hope is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day. So brothers and sisters, we hope to take the NBR collectively as uswatun hasana. And this same wording has been used for our own prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, which points to him being this microcosm, this summation of all the Prophet's beautiful characters, just as his message, his sharia, is the summation of all of the beautiful characteristics of their messages, their sharia. And so we have the best of mankind to emulate. And we as Muslims have been tasked with a role to not just practice our religion, but to really embody it so that we can help spread its light to, for, to the rest of the world. And this is not something difficult for Allah. So we should seek his aid in helping us and assisting us to be of those of the best of characters. And it starts with the most 
intimate of our interactions. It starts with our homes. It starts with our families and then spreads to our neighbors and our people at the workplace. And inshallah ta'ala, with the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can spread this light to the far corners of the world. I say this and I seek forgiveness for myself and for you. So seek his forgiveness for indeed he's the most forgiving and the most merciful. And with that comes to an end this week's khutbah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This khutbah was brought to you by Idha'atul Quran Abu Dhabi.